versus EG. This is it, or it may already be it for Fnatic, as their fate is pretty much done. Infamous currently playing and looking like they might get a win against IG Vitality, which would effectively eliminate Fnatic from the international. There is potential for a miraculous comeback, and Fnatic would have to win this game, but it looks like Fnatic are out of this year's TI. The fourth place finisher from last year. Different teammates, though. Slightly different team, you're right. Oh, fairly, fairly What's different. What's slightly different? <laughs> you got two, two out of five. Same, same team name, two out of five. It's like, well, it's the same way, like, you know, EG. It's very, very different EG at the same, like, much. Uh, but they at least have three same yeah. Oh, no, two. Well, only two. I know, three. Three. Universe, Zai, and Sumer. Oh. I know, Zai there's no Zai. Yeah, only two. <laughs> so, you, we copy you. What you did the last game, you first pick Earthshaker, you have this flexi pick, can go every lane, hero. We're gonna do it. Seems like it worked. Sure. Seems like... No, EG do have three. What are we talking about? RTZ, of course. RTZ, Sumail Universe. Crazy. Okay. You're, it's very confusing, you know. You never know which TI who was on Secret, which was on EG. I, I understand your confusion, Winter. <laughs> don't, get me, don't get me wrong. But uh, they're, they're three of the five. These are the two highest placing organizations from last TI that came to this TI because both Wings... Uh, well, organizations actually technically DC are here, but that DC team uh, became Planet Odd. Um, as far as like the spirit of the teams go, Fnatic, of, for the most part, some of the same players, e.g. some of the same players as well. Um, the third and fourth place finishes, and for Fnatic, it's just not the same or comparable results to last year. They're going to get the Shaker themselves, pair it with a Night Stalker, and e.g. get the Sand King Puck, the flexible pick openers, the Puck, off lane mid support, you never know where it's going to go. Sanking, potentially off lane, potentially four position, but also maybe a bit clearer where he is. Picking your fours early on is just seems to be a, a common theme. Oh, Shaker, Night nice Stalker, though. That's like pretty much kind of like less flexible in some ways, right? I like that. Yeah, yeah. what I do like about it is they. they Prevent EG getting the Earth Shaker, and now they also prevent them getting the Lycan. <laughs> yeah, so they, they don't first pick Night Stalker. If they first pick Night Stalker, then suddenly EG are going to go Lycan. Like, you can almost guarantee a Lycan pick if you first pick the Night Stalker. So they allow themselves to get the second pick Night Stalker and ban Lycan. Mm. Night Stalker gets countered at night. What a world we live in. <laughs> yeah, that is some crazy stuff. The Lich Ban comes into play, EG targeting supports. Fnatic a team less likely to run the mid shaker, I feel. More likely to run it. You don't feel it's like a cure lane. hero? Uh, it could be. I haven't seen him play it, yeah, but it, it does fit his style, maybe. But it's probably more likely off lane for them, yeah. I think. I agree with you. More likely an Ohio hero. It's just like knowing cures heroes that he likes to play in his hero pool. Like it, it is similar, maybe, and that can be a bit flashy and a bold hero, but I haven't seen it. So until I see it, I won't believe it. Drow bans, Lycan bans, banning some of those EG classics. Push heroes, because Night Stalker doesn't like to deal yeah. with push. And Drow Puck, we've seen that from EG time and time again. Really enables that offlane Puck to succeed. May just run mid Puck as a result, we'll have to wait and see. I hear. So... I mean, it still doesn't mean that the Sand King is the support, but <laughs> it's still out. Uh, it's, it's still open. It's still open. Yeah. If you if they want to swap it around, but so they have a very good roam right now. Uh, if they do IO Sand King, yeah. the thing that I I feel about IO Sand King is I feel both of these supports they need some resemblance of farm. Like I I don't like IO with no farm at all, but then Sand King, you want to function with a dagger. You don't really want to just buy wards too. What we often see, we've seen Zai go level 1 Sandstorm and just jungle, you know. He is definitely on the greedier side as far as fours go, but it's worked out well and been an effective way to play that Sand King. Yeah. There we go. EG. So EG there's a lot profit. of like global pressure right now. They pick yep. IO and they just profit. Very high mobility, and like IO, Nature's it's, Prophet It also Puck gives even. them, like the thing with IO is not just like a split push global presence here. He can be played as a five man hero. Say you have, let's say look at their current setup. Their Park Sand King to initiate. Prophet is the tower seizure, lane pushers. 
then you you let's say you pair up with like a Sven, like a tanky hero. Mm-hmm. Then you have yourself a like a five man pushing setup. So Io is also pretty flexible in that regard. Like there's a two ways to play the hero, not just split push. Sven, good pick against the Nature's Prophet, just being able to deal with those trains pretty well, push out lanes. <laughs> That's what you say, you know, sometimes the Sven gets trapped in the trees. <laughs> As sometimes. Artesi can let you... But know. in the laning phase, it's definitely really good uh, dealing with the, uh, the Treants. Uh, very hard for Prophet to bully the carry or the supports because of the Great Cleave. You clear out the, tr- the, the Treants and basically Prophet does not have uh, the lane advantage anymore. Yep. Looks like the last pick will be the Artesi hero though. With the the puck, nature's profit likely the the mid off laner. Yep, they ban out the timber saw. Timber saw really good uh, against the Wiz. Curious to see what are what kind of carry do you want against the the Sven, or are you worried more about the other heroes when you're picking this carry? Uh, right now, like it's Q, like what is Q gonna play? Is he gonna play like a PA or PL? Because uh, I think against Io, you want someone that can jump. Like in the Infamous series, uh, was it yesterday where we saw if you don't deal with the Io, <laughs> the Io is just gonna like he, yeah, they were yeah. playing against Liquid and they did they didn't deal with the Io and Io kept keeping people alive and it was so hard to play against. So you want to have a hero that can go behind your, the front lines and just jump the Io and kill him in the like fights. Like the Corp type picks, but Corp maybe can struggle against Puck sometimes a little bit. You do have a Night Stalker backing you mm. up. But Puck has an eye. But still, they need a hero that can kill the Wiz in yeah, the fights. We saw mid Clinks yesterday from mid one. That could be a uh, good pick. Oh, Clinks is quite good I against Io. Like, I like the Clinks. Yeah, Clinks is quite good. And the last Ben, Benno. Benno is the absolute nightmare for Sven to play yeah, against. Yeah, that would, that would have been the perfect Arteezy hero. Dax, yeah. Mid Shaker, it is, by the looks of things. Or possibly like a Sven yeah, mid, who knows? Uh, I think it's mid Shaker. Mid Shaker da- versus. Dacia, Ohio. Sven, mm-hmm. Ajit. Kyo is saying. Uh, you can play mid shaker, so can I. So they have this combo vacuum of shaker, Sven. <laughs> Necrophos. Uh, this is quite good at kiting the Sven. Yeah. Ghost Row, it's very, very good against him. That seemed to be the thought process with this last pick. And the last ban on Venom was very much that. Arteezy wants to play like a ranged carry that doesn't have to necessarily do like physical damage. They've got building hitters all right in the form of the Nature's Prophet. It's not only that. Wiss plus Necrophos, a lot of heal. Yeah. You've got kind of a close to unkillable Necrophos as a result. If Ayo can position and play well, and we'll see how that works as Fnatic and EG final game for this very line. solid lineup. From I think both teams have quite uh, pretty good ideas on what they want to do uh, with their lineup. It's very clear. Um, EG has I think EG has a faster paced lineup. They don't need as much farm as what uh, Fnatic drafted. I think it's like they have heroes that need quite some time to climb online. They're gonna have to stack ancients and they wanna hit like a big wombo combo big fight. And for whereas for EG they're gonna be really aggressive from the laning se- laning phase itself because Io plus Sand King go wrong because Necroforce is a very self sufficient carry. He doesn't need too much uh, babysitting from the supports. I- if they don't stay in the lane to help him, it's fine. He'll be do doing okay against the darks here. He just needs like vision. If he sees where the Night Stalker is, then he'll be okay. Okay, we'll see how he does there as <laughs> building <laughs> pipe inside. Uh, so we just saw, so we talked about uh, some funky pipes. Like we saw in the previous game of MV in game one. I can't remember what hero it was still, Slark? but he just bought one on Slark now. Slark know? is uh, I, I've seen this before in his yeah. streams. I watch his streams, so he does it he on Slark. He does it on Drow. I mean, pretty much anything he plays. Like, if it's a good. Pipe game, he's gonna get yeah. it. I mean, Arteezy, good friends with uh, Envy, so this is definitely done in, in good fun. <laughs> I feel like this is him paying his respects to uh, an innovator of Dota 2. Hey. Uh, if hey. Arteezy saw eye to eye, he would build the pipe himself. Dude, but. it is actually Crit playing the Sand King. I saw that, I was a bit surprised huh? by that. Isn't it? I mean, they both play the Iron, they both. Well, uh, normally. But the Sand King player, Zai is the Sand King player. Correct. I guess they just want to do something a bit different this game because it will be. So they're gonna. I think they're gonna oh. buy more watts on the Sand King, and Zai will be more of the rich one. I think with this setup. But I'm. Hmm. This Zai's Io is amazing, but Crits is also like he plays yeah. this hero very very well. Let's see how they actually play this support though, because it's very important to distribute the farm accordingly. They are both now. heroes that require some amount of farm. Shamel, Puck versus Shaker. Going to be probably a tough lane for the Shaker. You can't bully a Puck 
like you would a melee hero, and that's why this mid shaker is uh, definitely a risky pick to be pulling out. Fnatic, this is this is like some old school Fnatic stuff. They used to do this all the time. Two supports in the off lane, hiding in the trees, looking for an early first blood. Right, is he going to block this camp by the looks of things? Is he going to push up? He is oh. falling back. He seems to have an understanding of what might be going on. Is he going to fall prey to this one? Mm. Has now got the They I might try to kill him, but the two supports are here. Yep. Oh, EG. I right, have seen behind him. Can't actually heal him up with the tether right now. He's just trying to block and give some extra moves between. Artiz is going to turn around and fight once Arjit with the Death Pulse. It's going to be close. First Blood does go Fnatic's way as a one-for-one -one trade. Zai and Crit perhaps oh, looking for another more. Another stun is coming up. Yeah, DJ has not got the mana for a Frostbite. This new Crystal Maiden, there's a reason we haven't been seeing too much of it. Looks like EG are going to fully commit for the kill with the Necrofrost showing up. Fight will continue. RTZ may be enough to deter any further Fnatic aggression as Puck solo kills Qo. Uh, okay, just just two male things. Is it safe to say Qo might be a little bit tilted after not just previous game, but and the then previous now, now three days. Not a pause. <laughs> he dies and they pause. It's been a, a tough four days for Kira. This is a, a player who's kind of been a staple at Valve events, at Majors, at TIs. He's been one of the kind of most exciting, flashy players to watch, but this has definitely not been his event or his team's. Okay, so bottom lane. This lane is going to be gradually harder for Fnatic. Because the, once they get level 2 on the IO, I think they can't really kill because there's too much heal with yep. the Necroforce and the IO. And the Sand King can just stun the, the CM. Like, anyone would die, you know, if they commit into killing the Necro or the IO, they tether the Sand King stuns. Very likely someone's just going to die from that. No. Well, universe. Uh, Solo kill or higher. Well, you talk about bottom lane getting harder for Fnatic. Mid lane gets harder because Puck has double null. Top lane gets harder because Universe just got a solo kill and it's going to have phase boots. Every lane is going to keep getting harder and harder. And Sumail, oh, it gets harder because he's got a DD rune, so... Wait, Prophet killed Daxia? I don't know, Winter. I was, you know, this was like the last lane on my mind. Like, I come in, I see the picks in the draft, and I'm like, all right, let's keep an eye on bottom lane mostly. This lane is the least likely lane that yeah. the kill happens. I'm watching mid and bottom, like, as if our top they'll just farm, but no, apparently Daxia is getting solo killed. Well, it's not just QO perhaps succumbing to the misplays and the slight tilt as Ohio also gets solo killed in his lane. Sumail with a double damage room really looking to bully QO despite the poor man's shield. The damage is adding up. Universe. Really, I'm going to keep a closer eye on this top lane since Ohio again getting very low here. Yeah, now there's face boots. Lane is tough. <laughs> And this might actually be all lanes lost and a game, a very quick game, if this continues for Fnatic. Lose three lanes, lose the game is often the motto as they look to bounce back on this bottom lane. Zai has a salve, the Burris right catches two. Zai can now salve up. May look to tether a teammate for some extra regen here. Arteezy should be fine with that tether. Now the salve kicks in. Arteezy gonna get a lot of heal into mail. Oh, you uh, can't keep your eyes off of him. The fight's happening bottom, it's also happening mid. Twice now we've missed the solo kill at mid because of action at bottom, but, you know, Sumail, you guys can put two and two together and realize this guy is quite the rock star of a Dota 2 player. I think probably the most uh, skilled in, like, 1v1. He, he yeah. always tries to kill the enemy. He's and not like focused on farming creeps. Like and that's what I think, yeah, is scary about him in a 1v1 is that he's all, he doesn't he's not happy with sitting there out farming his opponent. He wants to kill his opponent and really cement the win in his lane. A lot of other mids will just try and win like the CS battle and then try like zone you out and pressure you. No, he doesn't pressure. He goes for kills. Kill him. You kill you in some ways is pressure. Yeah, okay. <laughs> if he doesn't kill you, <laughs> oh my gosh, Jumel looking for more. He's got a dream call. QO is dead again, perhaps. Has a salve. Can't even get any stuns off. Okay, yep, Jumel. Catch this one. Three solo kills in a row. DJ going to get caught at the bottom rune. Everything just going horrifically for Fnatic, who got to imagine at this point are uh, really feeling like nothing can work for them at this TI. They've rotated lanes. Arjit says, get me out of this bottom lane. He's going to head up top. Even that lane is not easy for him. The nature's problem with phase boots has a lot of harass potential. He's going to need supports to come. Yeah, lines being drawn. DJ's like, I'm coming top. Don't worry. I just have to walk there. It's going to take me some time. <laughs> and by CM taking some time, it, it takes a lot of time. Slowest hero in the game. 
Oh, okay, okay, night time. Parker, it's night time. And there's no Lycan this time, so a true <laughs> nighttime advantage perhaps, but Ayo is now TPing top, expecting this rotation because the ward does scout it out. So it looks like they are trying to bait Universe. Man, EG, they are just seemingly two steps ahead of Fnatic this game, but will it be enough? Can they save him with a regen rune? Should be able to do so. The bottle charge is kicking in now. Febby immediately tangoing out of that sprout. Crit almost got there in time for a Byro Strike, and that was very close to a return kill on Febby, if not for that fast tango out. It's the Byro Strike, DJ has got boots. Necro Arteezy happy just to take the 1v1 lane. He can farm just fine against the Darkseer, so I don't even feel like DG need to change their yeah, lane. Yeah, just mirroring the movements. Like, Ayo yeah. and Sanking are just predicting and moving towards where the uh, CM and I stock are going. Not gonna go for the kill, just gonna go for the, the pressure on the tower. Top lane, Febby gets stunned up this time after the Sprout. Could be in some trouble, one or two more right clicks, not gonna be there. The stun comes out, they really want Zai, no tether available, but there's the Nature's Prophet ultimate. Cleaving through them, Zai's got the last little bit of damage out, but one more Barra Strike will seal the deal for Ajit Sven. Double kill for Universe, and meanwhile Sumail has a haste room. What can he do here? He goes, drops down a dream called QO, and it's got friends in the neighborhood as DJ does TP in all four with a silent onto two. It's Febby showing up as well. Double TPs, but with a haste room, Sumail wants back in. He's got another orb soon. He's going to be going for this kill. Sumail, one versus three. Wants QO, wants DJ, wants everyone. Maybe pushing too far. The haste room wears off. He's got a silent, so he needs to use it. He gets stunned up and brought down <laughs> Sumail. You knew he was going to go for it. You knew he was going to try. And ultimately, he gets slightly outplayed by Fnag. You say outplayed, but when it's three versus one, you know, it's more outnumbered than anything. Oh, here comes Universe. Debbie has no tangos this time. The Sprout will well and truly lock him in place, and it may be night time, but Febby is in trouble. No points, or has doesn't have the, the flying, no points in the crippling fear for any kind of a silence. Has the 202 build in. Will get brought down. What a dominant start for EG, even with the puck dying at mid. I think Sumail's probably just going to laugh that one off, if anything. I mean, it's 1v3. <laughs> what, do you, what do you expect? What do you want? <laughs> the Dark Sim was actually nearby, if you notice. He's not done. He's going in for another. Uh, Ayo's here. They don't have a TP cancel. Okay. It's a kind of a win in itself, just forcing him to TP back to Fountain, though. The power's down. Yeah, that's Seven exactly minutes. that. You don't kill him, but the Dream Call does secure the objective, as doesn't look like anyone's rotating in. Sven is just level 5. He's not. I mean, this is a terrible position for a Sven to be in. This is the hero you want to be snowballing with in terms of farming efficiency. Farming in your lane, getting the stacks going, getting your Mask of Madness, farming those stacks, and he hasn't even got his initial farm. There's no treads, there's no Mask of Madness. Anyway, near completion. Sven is bottom four on net worth. Arteezy, meanwhile, not even need to get involved in this game. Sumail again, found uh, out. No orb available, may actually get brought down here. Oh, he dodges the fissure. Sumail gets the kill. Oh, don't know if he wants to jaunt there, but either way, uh, it's a kill. Perhaps a slight misread from him as he could have perhaps survived if not for that I jaunt. Mean, it's 1v3, he killed someone. Yeah, <laughs> again, it's it's still, he outplays them even if he could have maybe done a tiny bit better. Courier snipe, QO is looking for it. Surged away. Can't even get the courier. And QO now. Revealed in the enemy jungle. Oh, okay. DJ. Oh no. His position revealed. Did not get the surround with the treants, unfortunately, when he summoned them on the sprout. So Universe will not get the kill as a result. Not a big problem for him. He's farming and dominating the top lane. Every lane being dominated. I don't really feel like you can say any specific lane for that. It's just a general thing. Arteezy being gone on here at bottom, but that is just a solo darks here. And Arteezy's like, oh, okay, you wanna, you wanna play around here? No backup in sight for Ohio. Zai going to get healed up, and there is a Reaper's Scythe to finish off the kill. But TZ even throws out the Ghost Shroud for that extra bit of regen. After he gets it, and things go from bad to worse. Well, what can I do here? The game is hard. Uh, what can they win to do? That's. Wait for Echo Slam. Try to smoke. Uh, okay. I don't know, it's like. 
I mean, Sven just, all he can do is really farm at this point. Nothing he can really do to contribute to his team, so perhaps the other four heroes are the ones that have to make the plays happen. As much as Darkseer might want to just farm towards his mech, it feels like he needs to get involved. Just offering an Iron Shell, any bit of damage at this point counts. Yeah, they're so really lacking in damage, because the lanes all went so bad. Earthshaker is supposed to be a big chunk of damage, but he's so far behind the span as well. Here comes the Fnatic, looking for the sanking perhaps. Clipped by the Fissure, but that's also going to block... There are five Bridget. heroes around the same jungle. Can he get away? Has a TP scroll, looks like Crit could be in some trouble. But hey, they're pushing high ground, so Crit doesn't necessarily care about this one. QO gonna have to stun no him detection. out. Oh, okay. Another fire strike soon, but not soon enough, as he does get chain stunned. Meanwhile, EG on the high ground. Not a big kill, it's a level 5 Sand King. It doesn't really mount to too much, and the Reaper not gonna quite kill a higher, but they do get him with the follow-up damage. Darkseer down, suddenly the high ground defense not looking all too potent, and this tier 3 tower just being chipped away at. Arteezy has 16, 17 one charges. You can't really go on this Necrophos, and they're gonna get an 11 minute tier 3 tower. EG saying, we want to go and just chill out, secure our winner bracket slot. We will, we're done with this group stage. Fnatic may be done with this tournament if they can't find a way to hold their high ground here. It feels like this is the end of the road for the SEA team. Sven gonna throw the ultimate, there's Arteezy's Ghost Shroud Magic Wand, no one dying, the sustain from the Necroforce, from the Ayu, he's got Urn Charges now to play around with as well, they just can't kill anyone, perhaps Arteezy, Barrow Strike onto a couple, Zai going in, has some stick charges, Arteezy getting a bit low here, needs to throw the Death Pulses out, won't catch the Ayu in time to save his life, but DJ Shrining will barely survive, Arteezy gets the other kill though, he is just healing through the passive, the kills he is picking up from the Death Pulse, adding up and just making him unkillable and securing EG a 12 minute lane of racks. Well, well, well. What can Fnatic do? I feel like the answer at this point is really Call not GG. a whole lot. Soon. Yeah. <laughs> that is... That's the last game. They're probably going to play it out. Yeah, like you say, play it out. They don't know the results of those other games. You know, they may think there is still the, a smidgen of a chance if they can come back to advance, even just into the main event. They were in a terrible position last year with a day one, like, 0-8 start to the group stage and ended up finishing fourth at TI. So they know those kind of comebacks aren't possible, but this game just not looking all that likely, to be frank. TZ is charging forward with Crit backing him up. EG may just want to close this one out nice and early. They haven't even got like blinks on Puck. It just I think they have it coming out now, but like for that fight there, that, they got a Rax without an Orchid, without a blink. Arteezy didn't have his Atos. They, now they get the items. Now the blink, the Atos, the Orchid are going to be coming out. Just by sheer level and farm advantage. Fnatic being destroyed. In goes to mail, blinking into a stun, gets a nice three hero dream call. The vacuum turnaround is not bad, the Reaper is there as well. Puck getting very low, does end up dying. As Crick gonna look to burn them down with the Sandstorm, Arjit. Doing what damage he can, Fnatic buying back, hoping. Praying for some chance of a turnaround here. Arteezy in the front lines, getting brought low, but there's the Io bails him out with a relocate. And EG, if anything, can re-engage here. I don't think they have to leave the Io for dead. Very likely we'll look to actually fight on through this one. Wall being dropped for the Io's returned. Just an Io illusion. Nothing to frighten EG. Back to the mid lane they go. Puck gonna be TPing in and can only imagine EG will continue to push. The fact they have the amount of sustain they do in their draft. <laughs> he buys house and Chanta Mango Clarity for his team. Nice. What a bro. Not easy. The front line's getting brought low, but this is the power of the Io just sitting behind him, keeping him healed up. Sven's turn to buyback now. It's the third buyback for this defense. 17,000 plus gold lead at just 14 minutes in. This is not a game Fnatic are going to want to ever remember. Not a tournament they're going to want to remember as EG. Well, it's really securing their victory here. QO is smoked up behind. Doesn't even have a blink. You catch him from behind. 
So what? Can't even blink on top of them as Sumail gets another three-man coil. In comes Kyo. Silence up, though. The Orchid's going to catch him. This is surely got to be it. Kyo going to be... Oh, barely gets off the Echo. Gets the one kill. Instantly, GG's out as Ohio, DJ, and Co. recognize defeat. Brutal way to end their, your tournament run, but ultimately, two teams had to be eliminated, and Fnatic will be one of them, Winter. Well, back to the drawing board, I guess, for them. Say drawing board. Uh, TI, uh, not even talking about this team or what needs to I happen. Mean, TI, historically, teams that don't do well, you know, roster changes drawing happen. Board, man. Teams that do well, r TI winners, TI runner-ups have changed their roster afterwards, and gotta imagine there is changes in store for a lot of teams going into the next season. Fnatic, their year has ended and it was a disappointing finish. I think, I mean, the highlight really was the fact qualifying for TI, but obviously they expected and wanted to go further. They had a surprise run in those TI qualifiers. I think a lot of people didn't expect them to do as well as they did. Teams like Faceless were meant to be uh, the teams representing SEA at TI, but Fnatic ultimately winning that qualifier but failing to show up here in Seattle. Well, you win some, you lose some. That's Time to move on for EG, and not give up. Winner bracket secured uh, with a 2-0. They unlikely will win the group if Liquid somehow lose to Secret or draw. I think there's a chance of it, but most likely we'll see EG finishing second or third in their group, starting in the winner bracket. I think ultimately EG, that's all they care about, being in that winner bracket. They're a team who's just going to prepare for their next opponent, not care too much who they're versing. There's maybe some teams they don't want to verse, like an OG, who historically have beaten them a lot, but... EG have played good Dota throughout this group stage. Very consistent. Can't wait for the playoffs, dude. It all starts in two days. There's a couple more group stages, a couple potential tie breaks to wrap up, guys. So we're oh, going to yeah, say goodbye. Tie breaks. Who oh. knows? Yep, could happen. Going to be some crazy stuff. Follow all the action here in Dota 2, on Twitch, on YouTube, wherever you are watching. Myself, Gods, and Winter are done. Thanks, everyone, for listening to us for the last three and a bit days. We'll catch you guys later. See ya.